Hi, I'm Dylan Paris, and if you've watched my channel for a while, you might know that I've had a complicated relationship with the iPad Pro. My most popular videos tend to be about the iPad, with a few exceptions, and a lot of the growth of my channel has come from the things I've done with iPad music production. So I need to acknowledge the elephant in the room, which is that I pretty recently made a video called Don't Buy an iPad Pro, with no asterisks and no qualifiers. At the time, I felt like Apple wasn't treating the iPad Pro as a professional music device, and it really felt like music creators had been kind of abandoned to deal with a lot of different glitches and frustrations that, that seemed like they must have been tied to the hardware, as well as obviously the software. So what changed my mind? Well, there were rumors that there was going to be an M1 iPad Pro. This is something we've known about for a while. The M1 is really just a rebranding of the A14X, which never came out, but is basically what the M1 is. It's a souped up A-series chip. But what I didn't realize would happen, what I hadn't thought about happening, was that Apple was going to put the same amount of RAM that's in the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, iMac, and Mac Mini into an iPad Pro. And so a few weeks after I made that video, we lived in a world in which Apple had announced an 11-inch and a 12.9-inch iPad Pro that started at 8 gigs of RAM, and if you went to the 1 terabyte or 2 terabyte models, went all the way up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you've been following iPads for a while, you understand that's a ridiculous amount of RAM for an iPad. Historically, the highest amount of RAM you could get in an iPad was the six gigs in the 2020 Pros and the one terabyte 2018 Pros. So now we've got iPad Pros with a base of eight, same as the MacBooks and the iMac and the Mac Mini. And we have iPads you can buy that have 16 gigs of RAM. Geekbench results recently leaked out for the M1 12.9 inch iPad and it put it just a little bit below the MacBook Pro and Air, and above the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the i9. And so I've talked about this before, but obviously there's some kind of software story we don't understand, but there's no reason for Apple to make an iPad this powerful if they're not gonna start making software to go along with this hardware. Otherwise, this is just a massive waste of resources. And so I ordered the 16 gig, one terabyte, 11 inch iPad Pro, not the 12.9. I've talked about it before, the 12.9 inch XDR display is extremely attractive. It's a very cool idea. I really like mini LEDs in local dimming zones and they have thousands of them on the XDR display, which is really cool. However, for me, the most exciting thing about this iPad Pro was its portability. The idea you could have a tablet that was as powerful or more as a mid-config 16-inch MacBook Pro that you could essentially have just a slate that dang near matched the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 13-inch, but in a tiny portable factor. And the 12.9-inch seems to me more like a really awesome laptop replacement. A souped-up 11-inch is a whole new device. There's nothing like it in the world. And honestly, it's probably overkill right now. I'm not saying you should go do this. <laughs> if you're watching this video to appease your gear acquisition syndrome and justify your purchase, well, welcome, welcome. I mean, <laughs> it's obviously part of this. But I just had to be there on the ground floor. This is the most exciting the iPad has probably ever been. And we're less than a month away from WWDC, hopefully, where we're gonna learn about what the next version of the iPad OS will look like. And in my mind, it's just, you don't make an iPad Pro this powerful if you're not gonna make software to go along with that power. And honestly, if they just put logic on this thing, which I have talked about before in other videos, just logic with its built-in plugins, its built-in effects, its built-in live loops and arrangement view would be almost all I need. And along with that, this amount of hardware should hopefully ensure that if I wanna screen record a live LK session with AUM, if I wanna use a bunch of plugins in Cubasis 3, if I wanna try Beatmaker 3 ever again so I can hurt again, I will have more power than is even close to necessary to try this stuff out. And that is just really exciting to me. Now, my intention is to keep my PC laptop. I made a video about Aero 15 versus a MacBook. And at the time it was like, you kinda need one or the other in my head. But my hope now is that I can keep my PC laptop for my video editing, video gaming, using Ableton, all that stuff, and then use this very powerful iPad for stuff like Logic if it comes out, for art and drawing and Procreate. Hopefully more pro animation apps will come to the iPad and I can start doing animation on there to go along with my music and my videos. If Logic Pro does drop, then I'm really excited about the idea of really diving into it and using it as a primary DAW. If it's stable enough, potentially having just an 11 inch iPad and a launch pad as your controller for a live show. There's so much possibility with this amount of hardware and this small of a device and I'm just 
really stoked about the iPad in a way I haven't been in a while. If you're looking at the pros and you're like, I don't wanna pay $1,500 for an iPad, totally cool. Eight gigabytes of RAM is more than has ever been in an iPad. It's the base model for the MacBook Pro, for the MacBook Air, for the iMac, and the Mac Mini. Eight gigs of RAM is gonna be so much RAM for an iPad. And most of the Pro apps will still run on eight gigs of RAM. I think you're just gonna be limited potentially in like how many tracks you could have or how many video, simultaneous video streams you could have if they bring Final Cut, that kind of thing. But if you have any other computer, you also don't need this to be a souped up main tablet machine. And for some folks, it might make more sense to get a base model 12.9 inch because they just want a really nice media experience or a bigger drawing surface. And so I'm definitely not saying everyone should go do what I did at all. In fact, I'm never saying that. Um, I am very careful about trying not to make other people spend money just because I did. I am dumb. I buy things too much. I have it under control. I can afford it. I work a day job. It's all fine. And I sell stuff. I don't just hoard everything. I'm not a hoarder. I rotate. However, you don't have to do what I'm doing. <laughs> and I don't recommend doing what I'm doing. But especially if you've got like a four-year-old, three-year-old iPad Pro and you are really excited about the prospect of what future software could be. Or if you've got an aging MacBook and you really like the idea of going to a tablet, I will say if you buy in right now, there are a lot of frustrations. And almost everyone will tell you not to buy hardware or anything, any device with the expectation of a future unannounced software update. However, in my time as an iPad Pro user, especially since 2018, we went from iPad OS not existing, just being iOS, to iPad OS forking off, to the introduction of accessibility mouse support, to the introduction of true mouse support, the introduction of the magic keyboard, the introduction of external file support systems, the introduction of allowing you to use Xbox and PlayStation controllers instead of just made for iPhone controllers. All of this stuff has happened in the last two or three years. And you look at the power of these iPads and it's like, oh my God, what are they gonna do next? I mean, obviously everyone's talking about Mac apps. Are these universal apps gonna become the standard? Will you be able to run full scale Ableton and Adobe Premiere and all kinds of other applications that currently don't exist at all on the iPad. Are these gonna eventually come over as more and more apps just become written for ARM? I don't know, but I don't think you put that much hardware, that much power, that much RAM into a tablet like this if you don't expect to use it at some point, because otherwise that's just overkill. And Apple sells a couple of things that are a little overkill, but in general, I actually do think they do a pretty good job of allowing developers to utilize whatever hardware is available on their devices. Something funny about this channel is depending on the month or the week or the day you catch me, I'm probably gonna come off as an Apple hater or an Apple fanboy. <laughs> My number one most popular video is a review of my Note 10 Plus I bought on eBay. And most of the comments are people being like, Apple's the worst. And I'm just like, mm, <laughs> don't watch my other videos. Um, you know, I've got videos espousing how amazing iPads are, switching from the mini to the pro to, to my current iPad, the Air 3, which yes, I will be selling when the 11 Pro arrives. I only paid $430 for this, and I am fairly certain I can get about at least 300, so not a huge L. And it really has held me over while I look at what Apple's been doing with their new devices. Personally for me, I'm glad I waited and didn't buy an M1 MacBook because if they can even bring just a fraction of the Pro software over to the iPad, that is such an enticing device for me. I've talked about this before, but my dream computer is a base that can become many things. And we're so close. All I really need is Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, more Pro apps coming to the iPad, and true external monitor support, even dual monitor support, right? Your iPad is one screen, your external monitor is another screen, and you can use both, potentially even with floating apps, but I'll even take the current split screen, full screen paradigm if I can have multiple windows or multiple displays. We're not that far at this point. Given where we were before the fall of 2018 to where we are now, I am just so excited to see what the same amount of time brings to these new devices. And if you have an iPad Pro right now, especially anything since 2018, I don't think you should be too worried about being left behind, but there's a massive spec discrepancy between the M1 models and the 2018 models that don't have six gigs of RAM. Most of them only have four. Only the one terabyte 2018 models had six gigs of RAM, which at the time was way more RAM than you needed for an iPad. If you have a four gig of RAM iPad or less, I could imagine that I'm just speculating. I could imagine a scenario in which pro apps come along 
that have a RAM requirement, that have a processor requirement. Because RAM is such a limiting factor when you're porting existing desktop apps over to another platform. But this is Apple we're talking about. If they bring logic to the iPad, I think there's a good chance they say, oh, you can run it on any iPad. It's just if you want more than, you know, 20, 30, 40, 100 tracks or whatever, or if you want to run specific plugins, I don't know. That's where you start running into, okay, now you need more RAM. Now you need a faster processor. But I don't think Apple is gonna leave everyone behind. They support most of their devices for like five years, which is unheard of compared to most other smart devices, tablets, phones, etc. Honestly, the smart thing to do if you don't run a YouTube channel that <laughs> is primarily built off of the interests of people at the time, it's probably smarter to wait. But I run a YouTube channel. Me having this iPad when it comes out means me getting more views because I <laughs> because YouTube is essentially just of video search results for Google. Having an iPad Air 3 has really shown me, even if I'm running Core Gadget, even if I'm running GarageBand, even if I'm running Cubasis, apps that people are still using, because it's not on the newest hardware, people are not looking for it and these videos are not doing as well. So that's another big reason. I run a YouTube channel and I wanna see it grow and there's a lot of interest in iPad music for really good reason. Because as much as there are frustrations with iPad music production, when everything is working, there's just nothing like it. So I'm really excited about this device. I hope you stick around, potentially subscribe. If you wanna see more stuff with this iPad, it's on the way, or at least it's about to be on the way. I also ordered an Apple Pencil too, and an Amazon case I'll probably do a quick overview of at some point. But I wanna do that when I actually have the iPad and not just sitting on a shelf waiting for an iPad. This video is brought to you by me. I have music on Spotify under my name, Dylan Paris. My album is called There's Something Better, and I would be so honored if you check that out, link below, and consider following me there for more music. I'm also on Apple Music and every other platform. You can buy my stuff on Bandcamp if you're into that, but I know a lot of people don't actually buy on Bandcamp, so I don't usually direct people to Bandcamp. But anyway, I'll catch you next time. I'm really excited about this iPad, and I'm excited to show you what we discover, especially as Apple introduces new software updates. All right, peace.